guys how's it going electron man well we got a fun one today um been wanting to do it for a little while and kind of been getting the parts together but basically we're going to make ourselves a homemade dummy load that'll basically be perfect for an hf rig uh cb anything stock i'm going to build it with uh basically it should do like 150 watts constant so you could you know really check your radio it probably you know probably do up to 300 watts for 15 or 30 seconds but i mean really i'm building this for basically all my amateur radio cb anything else and i'm going to go ahead and use coax and so i have a low uh inductance in it so that i can go up into the hf2 because when you use wire ran resistors you have to be real careful about the uh the, it can cre create an inductance in it that you don't want and uh anyway uh we're gonna go ahead and get started on this and uh, we'll just take you along. Let me show you the parts that I've gathered and then we'll start the assembly process of this. It's really pretty simple. Um, in fact, I even did a little 3D print box for it to go in. All this stuff is bought off of Amazon and uh, total price, I think I had it like $17. Um, so it's an under $20 uh, dummy load and it's, I'm making it real compact and portable. Um, you know, it's not one of them oil cans. It's not going to do 1500 watts, but like I said, it'll it's great for you know If you just want to test your ham equipment and uh, I'm kind of making it small So it's handy because sometimes I end up wanting to go out like you know Somebody's having a problem and just uh, just have a dummy load, you know Take their antenna out of the measure put my meter hook a dummy load to it and make sure the radio's functioning, right? So it's handy to have a little portable one and, and you know at least enough power to cover 99% of what I did But anyway, here's the part these are uh, 100 watt resistors here, and obviously, you know, they're designed to be put on a heat sink. So, I bought two uh, 100 watt, 100 ohm because I'm going to hook them up in parallel, so that will give me 50 ohms. And I actually started with a 100 watt, 50 ohm one, but I got to thinking, yeah, that's a little bit small. I want a little bit more headroom than that. So, uh, so we decided to go ahead and go with. Uh, two 100 watts and do 100 ohms so when you put them parallel if you know ohms law that will make it 50 ohms so i have a 50 ohms load there um so anyway i bought these two and then i bought this heat sink all this is bought off of amazon i've already got it marked for where i'm going to drill it and uh put these in and obviously i'll put some heat sink compound on them you'll watch me do all that and then i got me an so239 connector and then here is the box that i decided to, to print out um it's a modified box i found it's actually for a ballum but I uh, changed some dimensions on it and uh, it should work really good for my little idea here. And basically it'll go like that and the heat sink will sit through there so it'll have good air. And uh, it, should, it should work good. I mean, I'll just, you can kind of follow me along. And then I just got a piece of, uh, of good coax. Um, technically you could just do a wire, hard wire to your SL239 on the inside, but back to, uh, I want it real efficient and uh, not create any of that inductance in there that might give me a problem. Um, so at higher levels, I mean, if you're just going to use it for HF only, just running hard wire like some, uh, you know, probably a 12 gauge would be or 14 gauge would be fine. Um, but but since I'm going to go a little higher frequency, um, I want to use coax all the way in there. Um, just my preference, but it could go either way. Just to mention, then I got me some screws. I never can find the screws I want. I had some other screws that I used for like a to see but pills that it would i think would have even worked better but it never fails whenever i'm looking for a screw i never can find it i find everything else so we'll go with those they're going to work and uh, of course i got my drill kit out here and got me a sink, sink, sink compound there so we're just going to go ahead and get to assembling this thing and i'll bring you along on it should be a, a fairly I, I think i spent more time collecting the stuff and and printing a box than i you know probably will on actually assembling it. so anyway let's go ahead and get to assembling No burrs again. See, there's one right there. And another one right there. You definitely don't want any burrs on it. I find just using a Phillips head kind of rounds that edge around there. I 
and then I just go back with see I got an edge there Okay, guys, let's get to start the build of this thing here. Um, let me go ahead and I'm just kind of test fitting the screw here, make sure they fit. I'm actually going to uh, test fit them both, and I'm going to go back and put some heat sink compound on them. I'm sorry, I was trying to do a double view on this uh, video, and somehow or another I managed to uh, lose the part of me applying the heat sink grease on them, but I promise you I did, and uh, it's kind of a boring part anyway. You don't really need it, but I was just making sure they fit good and it set good and flush, which it does. So then I moved on and uh, went ahead and put some heat sink, and here I am. You can see the heat sink a little bit on the grease on the side of it. But anyway, let's go ahead and bridge this one side of the resistors. And as you can see, I'm just using an old component. It's just an old spare component, but uh, I like that wire. It's silver-coated wire, and it works good for uh, jumpers and stuff like this. So basically, I'm going to use it to bond my two... Uh, resistors together so i have a parallel circuit and uh and that you know basically that's all you got to do on that one and i actually basically i will do that on both ends if you watch this closely and uh, right now i'm just you know doing a little hook on the end so it doesn't fall off when i when i get ready to solder it, just get it squeened down but anyway uh, let's go ahead and get them soldered um i mean this is pretty basic stuff basically we're just going to uh solder the bridge between the two of them so it's you know they are now connected as a parallel circuit so We'll just get these soldered, and then the uh, next thing we'll move on to is uh, getting the uh, the coax ready to go ahead and uh, assemble it. Which, as you can see, I put some heat shrink there, but the the internal or the uh, inside conductor on the coax is going to go on that end I just bridged, and then on the other end of it, we're going to use the shielding on the uh, coax. is is obviously my other connection. That's the ground side of it. So. So basically right now I'm just, uh, you know, doing the same things I did to the other side, building a little bridge, getting it straight, uh, kind of sizing it up. Um, I was tr trying to decide whether above or below it, but I decided to go above with that. And as you can see now, I'm just soldering it, same as the other side. And obviously you see, um, which I think I missed that part, but I just soldered the, you know, the uh, center conductor to that one end that I built the bridge. And now we're on to the other end of it. Okay, now I got it all sized up and everything. Um, we're going to take some, uh, this is 12-gauge uh, wire, and it's going to take about, oh, I don't know, probably about two inches and just strip it back. And uh, as you can see, I've got my shield there, and I'm just going to strip this wire back. And basically, I'm just going to, you know, use it to, uh, com you know, connect the two of them together. So basically, I'm just going to wrap it around there. So obviously, it'll, it'll connect to the bridge, and then it'll also go on the shield like that. I mean, I'm just taking some bare copper wire just wrapping it around there and uh that will bond everything together the shield and the ground wire which is going to have to go to the s239 i am going to use a little flux on this just for the simple fact of that uh i don't want to overheat the coax here and melt it and i figured putting a little flux on it to make it flow a little quicker and uh, as you can see here i'm just basically now i'm just going to solder that copper uh, wrap that I put around it to the uh, bridge and to the uh, shield of the coax. And uh, you just kind of want to be careful here. I'm, I'm kind of just watching to make sure as soon as it flows real good, I'm going to get off the heat because uh, if you're not careful, you could melt the, you know, center conductor insulator, um, which I didn't. Um, in fact, I went ahead and uh, double checked that real quick. And uh, now we're just going to do a sizing on it and uh, see how short I need to cut those wires. I didn't need a whole lot of wire. I figured I'd make it long better than short to go ahead and size it up, but this is the first time it's kind of going in assembled, and now I'm just kind of looking at it, which really I only need about three quarters of an inch of, of wire on both those, so I'm gonna just go ahead and clip those off, just like so. And uh, the next thing I'll be doing is that little red uh, terminal connector down there I'll go ahead and take the insulator off of that and then uh, strip this back and then I'll put that little terminal because that's when I'm going to run the screw that I bolt the whole thing together to bolt that red wire to the uh, SO239 connector that you know will be bolted on the front of the case. Obviously that's just to make a good connection between the two of them but uh, kind of figuring out how I want to face it you know before I solder it which 
I think, I don't know if I recorded soldering or not. I didn't know. So there it is. It's soldered on there now. And now I'm just sizing up on my coax, you know, how, how far back I need to cut on it and kind of get a good feel for it. I mean, like I said, this is, you know, three quarters of an inch. It's not a whole lot, which is really going to help on. There's not going to be any uh, inductance or any problems with it, uh, with using coax and then using sh short wires like that. And now, obviously, I'm just uh, soldering the center conductor in there. And here we go. This is really pretty much the final fitting in there. Now we've got her in there like we want. And I, that red terminal there will just go on that screw right there. As you see, I just ran the bolt through it, and I'm finishing up the rest of the bolts on it. I'm trying to make this video not, you know, an hour long of uh, boring stuff. So basically, uh, I put the bolts on there, and then I'm using a pair of needle nose to get the uh, nut on the other side. I went inside instead of outside on that connector so that, you know, if you ever needed to get in there, you could just loosen the bolts on it, and you'd be able to get in there and... Uh, and pull the whole unit out if i went on the outside i had to solder it and that would have been tricky trying to solder on the inside there and then if you ever had to take it apart again you'd have to solder it. now you just have to take the bolts out and uh and the unit will come right apart and i don't know that you know the only way i could ever think of that is if you burn up a resistor or something but at least this makes it more serviceable but but there you go um we'll do one final check here we'll go ahead and check the uh make sure we got a 50 ohm at the connector which uh Let's see if we have 50 ohms. Bingo. Okay, we're all good now. I'm just putting the lid on it. As you see, it just slides over the heat sink. Um, I sized it up that way when I printed it. So, I mean, really now it's just a matter of putting the lid on and uh, taking all the screws and screwing the thing down. And... Uh, we're actually pretty much done at this point. I mean, honestly, this whole project, you know, me hunting stuff up and stuff probably only took a couple hours. And uh, if you hang around, um, I'll probably go ahead and do a second video. I'm not going to do it in this one, and we'll show how it performs. I mean, I know it'll do great on HF, but uh, we'll go ahead and uh, do a full HF and VHF and UHF and just see where SWR ends up on all those different platforms on the SWR as a dummy load. Anyway, there you go, guys. There's my portable dummy load. Hope you enjoyed. Have a great day, and if you haven't already, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day. This is the Electron Man.